Hey, and welcome back. Well, now we're in Figma and we're gonna talk about responsive grids. Now, you may be designing for multiple screens. I mean, we do that a lot. And grids can really help with that. We just spoke about layout grids and typographic grids, and the history of grids, but you know, grids are used to scale up and down to display information on a multiple set of screens. So let's jump in. We have some cool demos here. First is the fixed grid. Now, the fixed grid, has a fixed container with position. I can demonstrate how this works. So as you adjust the frame, this container that's housing the actual uh, layout grid is gonna stay fixed and all the elements within it will stay fixed as well. So this actually maintains the exact measurements while the margin sizes increase or decrease like this. Even when I decrease it like that, they will stay fixed. Now this is great if you want all your elements to stay proportional, but when you get to larger screens, you may end up with way too much white space. Like this would be an extra large desktop screen and you're like, wow, that's a lot of white space right there. And there are ways to handle that, but fixed grids aren't really used as much anymore. So let's just put that back there. Next is the fluid grid. Now this is really cool. Now fluid grids are measured in percentages. So the columns of the grid or your entire grid will shrink or grow depending on the size of your screen. Let me show you what I mean. So here's our grid. And you'll notice when I stretch it, the columns will stretch too. And when I shrink it, the columns and the content shrink as well. All of these sizes will increase and decrease based off of percentages. That's kind of cool, right? You know what's even cooler? Take a look at those margins and gutters. Let's zoom in. Now, we've got margins on the right, gutters in the middle. Look at that. They aren't even shrinking or growing. The only thing that shrinks and grows is the size of your column. Your gutters and your margins will always stay the same. They don't change and they adhere to your base unit. So in this case, let's take a look. This is our layout over here. We got 24 pixel gutter and 24 pixel margin, and they are staying the same. Now, one con is that when you're on larger screens and you want to utilize some extra space, sometimes your content may look kind of stretched out, but there's ways to handle that. You could actually define a set width for your container, but still have it be responsive. Now, responsive grids. Here we have a set of four over here. This is always a kind of a topic that designers like to kind of not really talk about as much. You know, we need to always keep breakpoints in mind when we're designing for responsive layouts. As you notice, based off of our little demonstration there with uh, fixed and fluid content, content will stretch and shrink depending on your screen size. And you know, that's fine, we expect that. We can run away from this, but we have a way to work around this. So breakpoints allow us to scale up and down our design based off of desktop and mobile. So we have like extra large screens, large, medium, small. So this is probably like a tablet. This is your mobile screen, probably like your uh, regular laptop or small desktop and even larger screens. The first step is to always establish the set of breakpoints. You know, don't worry too much. There's a bunch of literature out there about certain breakpoints and what works best, but here's a set of breakpoints that I always use and it helps me get started on projects. So from small, Let's zoom in here. This one's at 375, but I usually define it by a little bit larger. I think 600 is fine for smaller phones. Something like that. This is just like your typical size of like an iPhone X screen or an XS medium. You got 600 to 899. This one's at 904, so we can there we go. You could just bring that up. And then larger, we have 900 to 1,199. So this one we can fix to that. Let's move over our content. You can see that sometimes there's really large screens that we need to think about. This would be our large, medium, something like that. Something like that for small. And for our extra large, it's 1200 pixels width and above. 
These breakpoints will help you define small, medium, large, and extra large breakpoints. And you can definitely modify your layout grid to change dramatically based off of that breakpoint, or you can change slightly. So let's take a look at what we got here. After we modify just a bit, let's just align them together. There we go, we just distributed it horizontally. So we can see on our extra large uh, column grid, we have a 12 column grid. And when we move a little bit down to large, nothing really changes with the layout, but we still have the same type of column grid. And when we move down to a medium grid, we start seeing some changes. Like we can use a six column grid. This would be typically a smaller laptop screen or even a tablet. So we start thinking about things like, how are these users actually experiencing our product? Do we need to scale down elements? Do we need to scale up elements uh, just to keep them tappable? And on small, like I said before, uh, you could use like a two column grid, but I think that really limits you. So over here, I have a six column grid. So we have two items together on there, and we can even do three items on this one. It gives you a little bit more variety. Before I said I liked a column grids and I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna just do a zoom out here. I'm going to copy this over here so we can work on it. And we're gonna change the columns from six to eight. Now that kind of looks skinny. It doesn't give us much breathing room in the margin and the gutter you can tell. We'll play around with red so it's easily visible. You have four columns on uh, to half the a column grid. But you can even like, if you want to have things kind of scale off the page a little bit and have that as a swiping behavior, you can do that. Another really nice thing you can do on a column grid is have something really large and like that. And then you can swipe it like that, which is really great. Now let's just kind of set that back. Actually, we can just delete this. Okay, so these are fluid layouts. Once we stretch these out, like it'll give us an indication on if we need to actually like scale up your design, if we need to scale down certain components like I mentioned before. But this is where you should probably start if you have to actually build a product or a website based off of, or that allows for multiple screens.